Welcome back. Um, since the last video, I have ordered up a new sump gasket for the SD170. Um, I need to get this thing back together though for the new owner, so might as well crack on with that. Um, sump came with a new gasket and dipstick and everything with it, so hopefully it's just a matter of screwing it down, sealing it up. I've heard that it can be quite difficult to get the seal right, so at least to have it upside down and on an engine stand so it could do it properly instead of trying to lie underneath the car and jiggle about it that way. So yeah, crack on with the music. Well, that's the sump back on. So that's basically this engine ready to go for its new owner. Um, I'm leaving the coil pack and leads and stuff on it because I am going coil on plug on the new car, as you saw in the last video. The retro Ford alternator kit is also staying on it as I have been shopping. I went for a DA Performance alternator kit. Um, so we'll see how that bolts on here in a wee second. Um, Gonna try and get the bits all mocked up on this car to make sure it all fits and then take it all apart again, get it all nicely painted up, powder coated up and be able to take it apart again then to get it ready for mocking up for the tunnels and stuff whenever the motorsport man needs it. Got my lovely wife on camera duties today, um, and if you hear a child in the background, it's one of the eight months old sitting at a pram in the garage, getting responsible. Um, I'm gonna bolt these bits together and see how they go. Uh, from taking a quick look at it, it looks like I'm gonna need to put this back on, which is the standard timing belt cover. Um, the one of the bolts from the alternator kit picks up this hole, so. Uh, the Um, this bolts on to the top bolt as I said. I need to take this out of the water pump and replace it with a nice countersunk one for the kit. And that's how you adjust the belt tension, obviously, by tightening that whenever it's at its tightest. The belt's at its tightest. Just putting this back on to check it all lines up, really. I do have a belt for it, but it's sitting at home, so it'll have to be another episode of that goes on.
damage. Mm. On to the actual alternator mount. One out. One slight problem with this that I can see is that if you're using two different parts from two different manufacturers, this bolts up nice and lovely with the four holes in the engine block, but so does the engine mount. So I'm going to need to take that much off the back of the Neil Dunn mount kit. Not Neil's fault or uh, DA's fault, just two different kits that aren't designed by the same people. So. I'm going to do that today with a child in the workshop, so I'll cut these off the next day, cut, I don't know what, 6-7mm off that, and bolt it all up the next day. Uh, for now, I can go ahead and fit this. Okay, and I'll put those bolts in today obviously because the, the mount needs to go back on there. Um, alternator. Fire it on. Need to press this back out a bit. Now then, next question is where does this go? Oh, what is it? I need to look at some pictures again on the internet, people. But you get the idea. Um, that's quite a nice setup. It puts the alternator at the far side, away out of the road, um, which is something I quite like whenever. The engine bay looks neat and tidy, and you don't have alternators sticking up way here out of the way, or in the way, um, in the way of the throttle bodies or whatever. So, I will do a bit of research, work out where the flip this goes, um, and I can see a threaded hole here. So, I'm gonna make an assumption that maybe it goes on like that. That would make sense to me, but I'll work that one out and get back to you whenever I've. Of the Neil Dunn mount kit again. Uh. Okay, another day, and I've done a bit of research thanks to DA Performance who I messaged and they were straight back to me with the answer. Turns out I was being thick as per usual, and there was another bag full of bolts and spacers and stuff that I hadn't seen. So, big spacer at the top, small spacer at the bottom, and the alternator now is adjustable. <clears throat> um, I have dug out the old timing cover and the old plug cover, I think they're going to go back on, um, need to obviously cleaned up and painted. The idler bracket and stuff is a nice piece of kit as well, um, it leaves clear and stuff for the water pump pulley and this kit will rotate the water pump the right way. Um, the next job I think to get this finished off is to trim the 6mm off the engine mount standoffs, so I'm going to do that now get it marked up and drill that and in theory once I bolt that back on that's the alternator kit done and um, the clutch and flywheel kit they're here this is the retro forward setup this is the retro forward flywheel that takes a pinto clutch I believe and um, I bought all this stuff second hand 
of a friend of mine that was only in the car for maybe a thousand miles, two thousand miles most. So it's nice to know that it all works and that it should all just bolt back together and work. So yeah, time to do the engine mounts. Right, let's see if this lines up. That all looks pretty good to me. The mount screwed back in. And get the alternator back on. I think that's pretty good. That leaves it now that everything bolts up pretty square. Um, the alternator is nice and out of the road. I think it should look pretty nice whenever sitting in the engine bay, all dressed up. Um, don't know how much further I'm going to go with this. Obviously, I need to put the sump on whenever the gasket arrives. Um, and I might give it like a paint, but. Until it's time to actually set it into the car. I don't think there's too much point in doing much more in this. Um, the only other thing that I need to do now really, or I want to do now before I start painting, is to trial fit the exhaust manifold to see if it's going to clear everything with the alternator, the mounts, everything. I haven't tried it on yet under this engine with everything on it, so here goes. thoughts are that yes it does so I will get it bolted on here Hold on. You'll agree that looks quite nice. The harsh performance stuff is always lovely. Um, don't really know what to do next. Um, I think until the sump gasket arrives, that's me at a standstill. Um, then once I get the sump all fitted and sealed up, I will probably take it all apart again and get it painted. Get it painted up. Uh, I don't intend to take the head off. It was a low mileage engine and the time I built and stuff. 
looks dead on. I probably will replace the timing belt to be fair before I fire it into the car. But everything seems dead on. I heard it running, so I'm happy enough. Um, yeah, that'll do me for today. Thanks for watching as per usual. If you like what you're seeing, hit the like and subscribe button. Um, the car itself is in good hands over at Grattan Motorsport. Sorry there's not much content on the actual Escort itself at the moment, but needs must with the lockdown. Um, as soon as there's any more updates, you know they'll be on here. Bye.